What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, Nemo Propaganda here, and today we're gonna make my favorite video that I get to make once a year, where we talk about the best and most standout products of the year, and for 2023, I've, I found some absolute gems, and I'm really happy to share them with you guys. These are products that I've been recommending all year for people to buy. These are products, in most cases, I would happily own myself, and in many cases, do own myself, because I bought a few of these bad boys. Um, I got a little bit of something for everyone. We're gonna talk about amps, speakers, subwoofers. I got different price categories and everything, so if something's a little bit outside of your budget, don't worry, something else might be. So let's jump into it with some honorable mentions to kick this off. So, first honorable mention is the Denifrips Aries 12-1. The reason it's an honorable mention and not a product of the year is because it's a lot like the Aries 2, except it gives us a nicer case, different IOs, a little bit deeper sound stage. And I already awarded the Aries 2 a product of the year uh, one or two years ago. I love that DAC. It's the DAC I use I think for a thousand bucks, you can't do any better than the Aries 12th Dash one. And honestly, I haven't reviewed a lot of DACs this year at all because I love the Aries so much. So I'll say this, look, it's fantastic. You got a thousand bucks. You've been curious about it. Just buy it. Or if you want to save some cash, again, you can get the more affordable Enyo. I reviewed the 12th Dash one just last week. You can check out that video. Next honorable mention is the Mon Acoustics Platamon Bookshelf Speaker at $6,500 a pair with stands included. That is a fantastic speaker. How good is it? I'm buying the review sample. That's how much I like it. The separation, the build quality, phenomenal. I love this speaker. I'm telling you I love it. I'm telling you I'm buying it, but it's an honorable mention and not a product of the year. What's going on? I'll tell you what's going on, and this is really simple, and maybe this is just me personally, but I feel that at $6,500 for the pair, even with stands included, we expect greatness, and they absolutely delivered greatness, but I feel like it would be a bit odd to give something an award for product of the year when it's priced so high that excellence should be standard. Now, I know that's not always the case. You know what I mean? There's speakers that cost more that aren't as good as the Platamon, and I talked about that in its own review. Um, but the speaker's absolutely fantastic, and if you're shopping around that price point, you should check them out. Next and last honorable mention is gonna be the Franco Serblin Accordo Bookshelf Speaker that clocks in at $15,000 for the pair with stands included. Again, the only reason this is an honorable mention and not a product of the year is because of the price. At 15 grand for a set of speakers, we expect excellence, we expect them to be outstanding, we expect them to just blow our minds with how good they are, and the Franco Serblin Accordo absolutely delivered. But again, at 15K, we they better deliver, you know what I mean? So with that out of the way, Let's jump back down to earth with some products that most of us can afford. And let's talk about a lifestyle product first. Um, this product I reviewed very early in the year and I was surprised by how much I liked it. At $899, it's the SVS Prime Wireless Pro Bookshelf Speaker. It's a powered set of speakers that can do Rune. Um, it's got HDMI ARC. You know, it's got a built-in network switch for God's sakes. I mean, it's got a subwoofer output. If you're looking to put some sound in a casual space, a shared space, a living room, you're gonna use it. The wife's gonna use it. The kids are gonna watch YouTube on it. You name it, it's it's just gonna, gonna be used by everyone. It's a shared space. You don't wanna fiddle around with more than one remote control. You want the darn thing to just work, have some clear highs, some good strong bass, not take up a lot of space. It's not gonna need a separate amplifier. It's one of those situations where most people should just shove a sound bar there, but you know those things aren't gonna sound that good. You want something that's gonna sound great, and the SVS Prime Wireless Pro absolutely deliver uh, in that kind of space. That's how I use them most of the time when I had the review sample here. Um, let's jump into some speakers. Um, first one on the list. The Fritz Carbon 7, man, the special edition Mark II at 2,800 bucks a pair. I love this speaker. It was so good. It was so good. The separation from top to bottom at every frequency, treble, mid-range, bass, didn't matter. Fantastic. Handling of delicate passages, nuanced detail, the realism in the mid-range that was actually very close to the double the price Platamon. Um, incredible. I, I really like the Fritz Carbon 7 Special Edition Mark IIs, and I think if you've got 2800 bucks for a set of speakers, 
I don't think you could do better than the Fritz Carbon 7s. They were absolutely fantastic and made in USA. Uh, next on the list, let's let's say those Fritz, you're like, hey, Nemo, those sound incredible. I know you love those, but 2800 bucks is a lot of money. I don't have that much cash. I need something cheaper. I got you, broski. Don't worry. We're going to talk about now. Uh, and this shouldn't come as a surprise if you've been watching my content. The Heco Salon Revolution 3 at 1154 1, Sorry, it's a weird price, guys. Yeah. $1,154 for the pair. Phenomenal. The cabinet, the finish, the driver complement, the sound. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. I'd say below $2,000. These deserve your attention. How good are they? I bought the review sample. I own them. I put my money where my mouth is. Now, real quick. Some of you guys might have seen a, another reviewer cover these speakers and he had some problems with the cabinets. Look guys, all manufactured products, occasionally you're gonna have some issues. In my opinion, I talked to that YouTuber, it seemed to me like the set of speakers he got were defective, he probably should have just returned them, but he was a handy guy and he just repaired them himself. You should not judge the Heco Salon Revolution 3 based on a set that were that should have never passed QC. Mine are absolutely flawless. Everyone I've talked to that owns them absolutely loves them. I've pushed mine in excess of 110 decibels. They play clean, they play clear, they have beautiful sound. It is one of my favorite speakers right now. I absolutely love the Heco Salon Revolution 3 and I strongly recommend it again. $2,000 or less. If that's your budget, you want to look at the Salon Revolution 3. Now, let's say you're like, dude, that's still like too much money. I need to spend less. No problem. I got you. Let's talk about the CSS Crichton 1 TD. Look, you don't have a lot of money. You're going to have to do a little bit of DIY, but you're going to get some fantastic sound for that DIY. Now, for those of you that got a little bit more money, there's an X version that opens up the treble a little bit. But in my opinion, if you don't mind a sound that is a little bit on the darker side of neutral, the value, the savings that the 1TD gives us at $709 is absolutely phenomenal. You're probably going to spend another $50, in glue and wood clamps and miscellaneous stuff. But at the end of it all, you're going to end up with a speaker that is an absolute champion. Um, the CSS Crichton 1TD is another speaker I own. Um, I bought the pair. I, I love them. They have such powerful bass. Um, they are easily um, going to be the bass champion in terms of like how low they can get, how forceful they can sound, how full and confident they sound. Absolutely incredible bass coming out of those things. You do need a good amplifier to run them though. Now, let's say you're like, Nemo, I appreciate you keep going down in price, but I need cheaper even $709 in a DIY isn't cheap enough. I got you, broski. Don't worry. At $419, the Heco Aurora 300. Yes, Heco is making the list twice. They know what they're doing. The Heco Aurora 300, man, this is another speaker I put my money where my mouth is. I bought them. I own them. I love them. The cabinet work is so good looking for the price category. It doesn't make sense. I think the Heco Aurora 300 is the absolute benchmark of what a $400 speaker should sound like. I'll be honest, even $700 and down, if that's your price category, you should look at the Heco Aurora 300. Absolutely fantastic sound. Overall, it's going to be on the warmer side of neutral with good, strong, confident bass. It actually sounds a lot like the CSS Crichton 1TD. Now, the Crichton 1TD being more expensive and being DIY is definitely going to do a lot of those things better, but it's a similar sound. They're cut from a similar cloth. The Aurora 300s, again, it's the standard, in my opinion, of what a speaker, you know, $700 or less. It's the standard. It's as good as it gets. Um... I'll give you one honorable mention just in case that's still too expensive. You're going to have to wait for a sale. Uh, but the Klipsch R50M, those when those bad boys go on sale, I saw some guys a couple of months ago. Um, they said they were paying like middle 200s, like 240, 250. If you can get the R50M that cheap, that that's a, that's a really good speaker. Uh, but at full price, though, this is the thing. At full price, the R50M is 399 and the Heco Aurora 300 at 419 is just absolutely superior. So, all right, what's next on the list? We're going to talk about amplifiers, boys. Okay, this amplifier, wow. The Choco Sound Eme, 
fantastic, absolutely fantastic, $1,694. It's a purest piece, no tone controls, no DAC, no phono, no balance control, no pre-outs, no subwoofer out. It is an amplifier with a volume knob, and that's pretty much it. And at under $1,700, it's some of the best sound I've ever heard, I'd say south of $2,500 for an amplifier. I absolutely love that amp. How much do I love it? Well, I didn't buy it. Um, I don't need another amp, but I did email Kinky Studio as soon as the review was over. And I'm like, hey, finish with the review. Um, mind if I hold on to it for a couple of months? Because I want to continue to use it as I demo other speakers because it's just so good for its price category. Holy crap. It absolutely punches above its weight. I love it. Um, now, I know some of you guys are like, hey, you, you said it didn't have a lot of stuff. You said it was this purest piece with not a lot of features. I need some features. No problem, I'll give you an amp with some features. You're gonna have to spend a little bit more money, but this amplifier was phenomenal. Thomas and Stereo's Galleon TS120 Special Edition. The man knew what he was doing when he did this, wow. Um, the only reason I don't own this amplifier is I don't have the space for it. My rack is made out of glass and I can't fit anything else in it. And this rack cannot hold the weight of the Galleon. It's a beast, It's I wanna say, 65 pounds um, and this rack is not weighted. It's it's pretty close to full weight already. Um, but man, the Galleon TS120 Special Edition, it has all the strengths of solid state and all the strengths of tubes at the same time. So it's a bit of a hidden gem, and, well, not a hidden gem because it's not, a lot of people know about it, but it's a, it's a bit of a unique product. It, you know, sometimes, Tube amplifiers may not have the most resolving treble. It's not bad treble by any means, but it does not compete generally with some of the best solid state amps. The Galleon treble is very resolving, however. Um, and then bass, oftentimes tube amps just don't have a lot of bass. They don't have a lot of power. They don't have a lot of bass. It is what it is. The Galleon, it doesn't just have good, strong, confident bass. It has good, strong, confident bass like monoblocks. Um, the thing kicks. It is so full and confident in the bass region. Oh my goodness. And then the mid range, oh, it's that tube goodness. Holographic. You could feel like you you feel like you could reach out and touch the music. It's got dimension to it and depth, and it sounds absolutely beautiful. Um, I'll be honest, when that review uh was over, I was kind of hoping Thomas would let me hold on to that thing for at least at least, you know, 30, 60 days longer. Uh, but he emailed me right away and he was like, hey, I need that thing back. Can you send it back? And I was like, yeah, no problem, of course. Because, you know, it, the, the review was over. But I really wanted to hold on to that thing for a little bit longer just because I love the sound so much. Um, so hats off. Good job, Thomas. You, you really did knock it out of the park with that Galleon. Now, some of you guys are like, hey, that sounds really cool. Uh, but that's a tube amp. I don't want a tube amp. You know what I mean? Uh, those things run hot. They take up a lot of electricity. They're super heavy, whatever. What, what's a good solid state amp? I got you. And this one's on sale. The Hegel H190, generally $3,900 MSRP. It's on clearance right now for $2,800. That's an $1,100 discount. Um, I don't know what's going on. Maybe, maybe Hegel's coming out with a new model or something. Either way, at $2,800 for an H190, that is a killer price. Um, it's going to give you good, good amount of features and things like that. It's going to sound fantastic. It's an easy amplifier to recommend because it's mostly neutral. It's easy to listen to, but it's good, got good high quality sound. That's fairly agreeable for most people. Again, at the sale price, it really is a no brainer. Last category, Nemo propaganda's favorite category, subwoofers. Let's go. So without a doubt, the best subwoofer I reviewed all year. Listen, if space is not a concern, the RSL Speedwoofer 12S puts out monstrous levels of extension, bass, force, with very good transient response too. And some of you guys might not understand why that's a big deal. Usually giant vented subwoofers are really, really good at shaking the house. They're really good, figure 35 hertz and below, and that's it. They don't have the best transients. They don't have very good note-to-note -note distinction. They are kind of one-note wonders, right? But they do that one note really, really well. And that's the reason a lot of people that have giant vented subs generally have smaller sealed subs in the back of their theater. The RSL 12S doesn't have that problem. It's a giant sub, 
but it's, it's handling of delicate passages are actually pretty darn good. It's transient response and speed and articulation rivals some small sealed subwoofers, but it's got this monstrous output, this monstrous sense of scale to it and effortlessness. Guys, if the darn thing wasn't so big, I'd own a pair of them. I love that thing. It comes in white now, by the way. And it's $799. It is the best subwoofer you can buy if size is not a concern. Holy crap. I, it should cost more. It really should cost more. When Black Friday was coming up, I was like, there's no way they're going to run a sale. And somehow they ran a sale. I, I don't know how they're making money. It's, it's the thing's a behemoth and it's incredible sounding. I mean, okay, that's enough. I could talk about the 12S a lot. I really like that thing. Now, let's say you're like Nemo, that sounds fantastic, but that thing's huge, bro. And you know, I need something more medium size. You know, my wife is not gonna let me have something that big in the house, or maybe you personally just don't even have the space for it or don't like the aesthetics of such a large subwoofer. The Rhythmic LV-12M. Look, I know these things have been out of stock ever since I reviewed them like six months ago. I talked to Rhythmic before filming this video. I'm like, listen, I'm about to give this thing an award. When's it coming back in stock? And they said, January, middle to end of January. So those of you that have been holding your breath for a Rhythmic LV-12M, listen, it's really simple. If you need a smaller vented subwoofer, because the LV-12M is actually very compact. Um, it's smaller than the SVS PB1000 Pro, and that's a pretty compact vented 12. Listen, it's this simple. Rhythmic makes the best sounding vented subwoofers in the world straight up. That's what they do. They sound phenomenal. They are without equal in the vented subwoofer category. On top of that, they have tremendous extension, output fidelity, handling of nuanced passages, and the best note-to-note -note distinction in the industry, period, even compared to some of the best sealed subwoofers. It's that simple. Some of you guys are like, hey, what about that RSL Speedwoofer 12S you were just talking about? It, it's just right behind it, okay? It's right behind it. But it Rhythmic makes the best sounding subwoofer. Now, some of you guys might be like, well, you know, shouldn't I just buy the RSL then? Or, or why, why wouldn't I just buy the, like, the Rhythmic? Or like, which one should I buy? Look, they're different sizes. That's why I got both on the list, boys. The Rhythmic LV-12M is much smaller than the RSL Speedwoofer 12S. So understandably, it's not gonna have that 16 hertz forcefulness that the Speedwoofer has, nor can it match its scale and output being you know, so much smaller. Again, this is gonna be for those guys that are looking more for that medium sized subwoofer. I think if you've got figure under $1,000 and you're looking for the best vented subwoofer money can buy, that's not big, um, the Rhythmic LV-12M is it, it's just that simple. Um, let's talk about something even smaller. Cause I know some of you guys are going to be like Nemo. That's cool. But I live in an apartment. I don't even need that output. I, I need smaller. I got you. I got you. And again, it's the same price. $699. The REL HT 1003 Mark II. This is such a good subwoofer. It's a sealed 10 inch. So it's going to be compact. It's going to be small, but it's going to have extension. It's going to have respectable output. It's going to have incredibly good transients. Um, these three subwoofers are the best for their physical dimensions, if that makes sense, and absolutely for their prices. Each one of these subwoofers is priced extremely well. The REL 1003 Mark II, in my opinion, is the benchmark of what a small subwoofer should be capable of under $1,000. It's absolutely incredible. Um, I still have the review sample here. I refuse to send it back. It's that good. It's a benchmark. That's what I, I this is what I told REL, um, uh, I was like, hey, th this thing is like the standard for me for small subs. I'd like to just hold on to it for a little bit longer um, and, and, until I find something better, honestly, because any small sub that comes through here, I'm, I'm going to use that kind of as a reference point. And they were like, yeah, that's fine. No problem. So, um, I, you know, I, I, I very rarely ask companies if I can hold on to stuff a little bit longer. So when I do, usually they're very gracious, especially if I've worked with them a few times and I'm not going to run away and steal the stuff, you know? So look, man, it's, that's it. That's the video guys. I'll give you a quick recap, man. SVS prime wireless pro for that lifestyle category for that mixed space. Uh, Fritz Carbon 7 Special Edition Mark IIs, if you've got $3,000 or less for a, a set of bookshelf speakers. If that's too much, you got the Heco Salon Revolution 3s at $1,154. 
Um, if that's too much, you've got the CSS Crichton 1 TDs at $709. And if that's too much, you got the Heco Aurora 300s. In the amplifier category, the Choco Sound Eme was fantastic at less than $1,700. Um, if you need some more features, however, you got the Galleon TS120 Special Edition or the Hegel H190. You know, pick based on whether you like tube or solid state. And we just went through the subwoofers. It's really simple with the subwoofers. I picked a small one, I picked a medium one, and I picked a large one. And I believe each one is the best for their physical size. Each one blew me away. So that brings this video to a close. Now, this YouTube channel does have a free Discord. Feel free to hop in there if you've got any questions. If I awarded a product that some other reviewer reviewed and they said something different than what I'm saying and you wanna to talk to me about that, do me a favor, don't. I don't watch other people's content, guys. Sometimes someone will comment and be like, this other YouTuber said X, Y, Z, what do you think about that? I don't have an opinion. I don't watch other YouTubers' content. I'm, I hate to say this, but I'm generally not interested in what other people have to say about the product. Um, sometimes I will watch other people's content if it's something I'm really interested in. Like let's say there's a set of speakers and I'm just curious about them and I see like Andrew Robinson reviews them. I'll probably watch that video then, right? But I don't just religiously watch other content creators for audio. If I'm watching YouTube videos, guys, it's mostly gonna be about space, you know, something about physics, it might be an audio book. Yeah, there's audio books on here, believe it or not. Um, or, uh, you know, maybe video game reviews, man, love those. So again, thank you for being with me all year. This has been a good year. Um, each one of these products I'd happily own. I'd, I'd happily own. Um, I'd own any combination of these products as a system. Like I'm gonna tell you right now, like just off the cuff, the, the Fritz carbon seven special edition Mark twos paired with the Galleon and, uh, We'll do a pair of the Rel HT 1003 Mark II's phenomenal system. You can combine any of these products for a phenomenal system, guys. So, all right, look, I'm rambling. We'll wrap up the video. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, later.